This is Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the September 13th meeting of the Long Beach Board of Zoning Appeals. You can find more information on this meeting at www.accesslaportcounty.org. I'd like to call the order to the Town of Long Beach Advisory Board of Zoning Appeals. The regular meeting for Tuesday, September 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Um, before we do our roll call, I'd like to introduce two board members uh, that are new to us. Um, down here at the end of the table to my right, is that correct? Um, this is Seth McCormick and of course, you know, John Mingle and Doug are, have been on our board. And then on the other side is Fred Woods and they are joining us to complete our board of five feet. So we welcome you both and uh, jump ready. It's gonna be a lot of fun, glad you're here. Um, Meg, if you go ahead and do roll call. Chairman Meg Canyon, uh, present. Board members Seth McCormick, John Mangle, present. Doug Wigstrom, present. Fred Woods, present. There are no absent board members. BCA Council Chris Willoughby, present. BCA Secretary Meg Collins, I'm present. Building Commission Representative Bob LeMay, here. That concludes roll. Thanks, Meg. Uh, let's stand and um, do the first lead. I pledge allegiance to be the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, First item of business is the approval of the minutes from our August 9th, uh, 2022 regular meeting. Um, can I have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor of approving those minutes, um, can I hear our. Aye. Do we have to? We don't have to do it. I'll do it. No. 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 Aye. Aye. It's unanimous for that. Um, no old business. Uh, no new business. No preliminary hearings. We have a public hearing on the docket. And Meg, would you read the description of that particular petition? The public hearing is for Yellow Bear Farms LLC, lot 51 to 73 of Pitt & Shores, first edition, parcel number, I'm not going to read that, Developmental Standards Variance Petition, requesting variance from the requirements of section 154.048, maximum height of buildings. The petitioner is seeking to build a home with a height increase from 27 to 33 feet from the highest final grade. The preliminary hearing opened at the June 14th BCA meeting. The public hearing opened at the July 12th BCA meeting. The public hearing concluded and any vote by the board was continued to the August 9th meeting. And at the petitioner's request, the public hearing was continued to tonight. Thank you. Um, I'm going to yield to our council, Chris, for um, how to proceed. Well, I'm going to um, set the stage. Uh, the public hearing was actually closed after the last. So the public hearing being continued or final decision it was made to continue that at the request of the petitioners. Uh, since that time, here we are to continue. Uh, we have two additional board members. My suggestion is that there are two board members. I don't know the, the extent to which they're prepared. They may recuse themselves if they so choose and they don't feel like they've participated in that process. There's nothing from stopping them in, in terms of participating. Three votes are required to give approval to or to vote down, um, regardless of anybody everybody participates recuses themselves or not so i just want to put that reminder out there um, also since the public hearing in july um, and i believe as everybody knows by now attorney as you know that was here from the lewis kaminsky and jones has been retained um, my my strong recommendation would be to to allow them to wrap up and i guess kind of present where they were because again to fill in or or recap where we were there were some suggestions 
uh, regarding the potential for them to uh, suggest some conditions that they might propose uh, as a reminder or informing some of you that haven't participated in these uh, conditions are things that the BZA can impose that could, you could accept um, some of the conditions that they are willing to propose you can suggest your own or you don't have to do any as a reminder they have three legal hurdles that they were required to establish and those burdens uh, were upon them to prove why they are why they should be entitled to the grant of the variance that sought for the height. Um, with that, otherwise it's pretty straightforward. It, um, from my perspective, <clears throat> and my advice to you is the hearing is closed, the record is set in terms of the evidence and the documentation, et cetera, that was presented by the builder. But again, I, I do recommend giving the council and as well as the courtesy. And, and again, he's always been respectful before you to allow him to kind of recap where they were. And, and perhaps, you know, I, my understanding is he, there are some conditions to propose as promised back in July. Dr. We have to agree as a boulder and we just proceed. Um, I, I, no, I don't think you don't have to. I, I think that that was the, the overall agreement between the parties then is that they asked for a continuous to decide whether they were going to withdraw, potentially propose some conditions. So I don't, you don't have to do anything formal. The formality will be any motion, second, et cetera, to introduce or propose some findings and decisions. Okay. So let's call in the Nino backup. Thank you, but I appreciate that introduction. Um, I am Anthony Novak, uh, with Kaminsky and Jones and Report. Um, I was retained on uh, August 9th, so it was the date the last hearing was continued by the petitioner here, Yellow Bear Farms. As Chris indicated, um, public hearing occurred at that time. And ultimately, since that time, we've been busy at work trying to resolve some of the concerns that were presented and then ultimately present you with some concessions if you'd be so agreeable to grant the variance. So first, there was an adjoining landowner, Rick and Liz, Rick and Liz Luderbach, who originally objected to the uh, petition. Since that time, the petitioner has met with uh, the Luderbachs, has gone over the plans, and they submitted a, a letter yesterday um, to Meg indicating that they no longer object and they're back in support of the petition and having them be residents of our community. Second, it was discussed after the fire department submitted their letter back in July, I believe, um, that we could potentially meet. So we met with um, Kurt Ernst and Larry Wall, I believe a couple of weeks ago to address the concerns that they ultimately had. And then that ultimately leads us to where we are tonight which is the conditions. As Chris had indicated, our request is for a variance from the height of 27 feet to allow a structure of 33 feet height above grade conditioned upon us doing the following, and there's five of them, and excuse me as I kind of read this verbatim. Number one, if granted, we'd be, uh, we would uh, install a fire suppression system installed pursuant to state fire code and any other codes applicable with 24-hour monitoring by an outside monitoring company, which would call the fire department immediately if a fire were, de were detected. It'd be installed on both floors, first and second, as well as the crawl space, and obviously installed at our cost. Number two, a 24-hour monitored smoke and carbon monoxide detection system. So that's kind of from the fire standpoint, those two. For the fire department and access and safety perspective, number one, I believe we were originally going to propose a drive of 10 feet wide. Now we're going to have a 20-foot wide drive capable of supporting 80,000-pound fire trucks um, and a 13-foot, 6-inch clear height above the drive. Number four, a turnaround for those fire trucks that would be 70 feet deep, 20 feet wide, between the circular drive and the road with a 28-foot turning radius. And then number five, <laughs> the installation of a Knox box that they gave the fire department access. And for those that don't know the Knox box, because I didn't and I had to look it up myself, um, simply it's a small box 
wall mounted safe that holds keys that the fire department, emergency medical services, and sometimes police can retrieve in the event of an emergency. So ultimately, that's, that's the simple request. We're still requesting the height variance from 27 feet to 33 feet, uh, imposing these conditions. So certainly open for any questions, but I wanted to keep it brief given the facts. What's the fire suppression medium? What's that? What's the fire suppression medium? So water. I don't know specifically, but it's 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 ultimately something that the engineer would be willing to work with you guys to make sure it's something that's agreeable. Water, 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 water. Certainly, Whatever. certainly. I do not know the technical components, but it, it would be a system that would ultimately be uh, acceptable. But I don't know that specific. With this uh, fire suppression system, is there going to be a um, professional document with a certification from the professional that describes the system and makes it to the town? Yes. When would that be available? It would be at the time of application. And, and we can certainly make it available sooner, but I would, I would envision that at the time of applying for the building permit when you have to lay out or whether it's meeting with the building commission or whatever the process exactly is we could supply information at that time that has whatever appropriate certifications show that it means code or does anything that would be required and the um reviewed by the building commission for their acceptance is that what they're what is being considered in the proposed yeah, I mean, ultimately, I could say is the condition here from the BZA would be that the variance would be granted as long as they do the following and put in the fire suppression system. So, um, you know, whether or not that fire suppression meets certain parameters that the, the, the building commission uh, would want to um, impose, we would certainly be willing to uh, agree to that. I just. Um, um, Want to make, I want to understand. I mean, the review of that is not going to happen by us, it's going to happen by the building commission for their acceptance. Is that, Bob, is that uh, what you need? Is that appropriate to ask Bob? Well, I, I, so that you don't get bogged down in that detail, it wouldn't be something that would be yours. But I think that you, if you were inclined to accept such a proposal, then you could take it further and mandate that because again, you get to impose the conditions they're suggesting, including a couple of things that you couldn't otherwise require under the code. So you could mandate that it's approved by, so that if, again, I guess the risk is that they never get approved by the building commission and we can't satisfy them, then they're not going to get the, that variance won't be valid. Right. I, um, yeah. Just trying to think of scenario where goes back to the building commission with the variance granted by us and then oh well you know the easy said it was okay so the building commission has to say the location it's okay yeah so, i i thought i had heard the people learn at home that the state of indiana does not allow communities to require a fire suppression system in a residence um it's a business or industrial they can but but my understanding is that it's not legal but well yeah. let's go on there it can be required but they're offering it and they're giving it as a concession and that's the nuance here so that is absolutely correct because the town had trucked it on behalf or the fire department tried to have that implemented years ago and that's where they learned that lesson downstate the nuance here is that they are offering that so then again it would be if you were inclined to approve it the building commission is going to review it and make sure that it's in compliance with state code and the type of structure that's being built so again i think you have the freedom to impose the who's going to be responsible um, but not your responsibility to review certainly can't require and i agree with dr Lebe, so we, we have a little bit of a, a, a you know, gray area. Again, two and two points. Number one, the builder is actually on who can ask, answer technical questions. But number two, one thing that I did hear in our last meeting is 
uh, cannot be required, but if it is, there are specific state codes that have to be complied with once installed, and, and those are something that we would be. Yeah. It's, the BZA is not equipped to enforce those kinds of codes. Certainly. And, uh, I mean, we're looking to set aside a particular part based upon your willingness to go beyond what's the minimum that's required. Mm -hmm. And I just want to see how that plays out Certainly. if we were to accept it. Certainly. Um, I do have a question to Anthony. How did you arrive at these five things that you decided would be appropriate. Certainly, and, and Mike, can you hear us? Yes, I can. So Mike, and if you don't mind, yes. so Mike, the, the question that, that uh, the president had was, how did we arrive at these five specific conditions as, as what's being satisfactory for the fire and safety issues? Sure, so there's a, uh, community up in Michigan that we work with and we work closely with their fire department and these are some of the same stipulations that we need to follow to be able to build in one of the communities that we build in and so we review those often with them and uh, we thought well these seem like a, a good level of, of uh, things that we would offer in exchange uh, that were in, put in place by their fire department. And so when it comes to the, uh, the fire suppression system, for instance, uh, we have to there, we have to go get the system designed by somebody like a company like Total Fire Protection. They actually engineer the whole system. Then, they, then we bring that into the fire department and the building department and then they have to approve it as condition to get in the building permit and so that is uh that's the way we do it there and then they've given us the the stipulations on weight of their equipment and the width of the driveway and their turning radius and all that is what we've used as the uh condition here assuming that it would be pretty similar to you know that that the uh the long beach uh, fire department equipment would be uh, needing as well, even the height requirement, you know, uh, no trees hanging over, all that kind of thing. When you met with, and this might, might, might bring to you too, when you met with the Long Beach um, Fire Department, did they give you any suggestions? Did you offer any? How did that? How did we come? How did we arrive at these? No, candidly, I, and I'll be just completely frank with you, we spoke with them, and when I spoke with Kurt specifically, he indicated that he didn't know if there was really much of what we could present to them that would change their opinion, simply because they installed, they created this ordinance back in maybe five, six years ago, and he was concerned that there was going to be a slippery slope here, that if we grant this, or if you guys grant this tonight, everyone's going to be granting this going forward. So as a result of that, we got together, Mike, and, and the client to come up with these conditions that they've used in other communities. And, and, and we actually think the opposite of the slippery slope would occur, which is if you're not uh, you know, inclined to grant these variances, but now you actually do, but when somebody did, they imposed these five conditions, I think it could be beneficial for other people that request this, that look, we can't require you to do these five conditions, but that if you do approve this, you know, precedence, not that you really have, but precedent shows that you need to go above and beyond. So I think it could honestly be beneficial. So while unfortunately we, we couldn't turn, you know, Kurt and the membership, and I understand what they went through politically to get this ordinance passed, you know, I think that this is a situation where you have the opportunity to control and get additional conditions on something, even if, Understandably, Kurt saying, "Look, we just can't go to bat for you on this after what we did." So that's how we run that. Um, is your client willing to do less than sixty? Mike, sorry, say that once again. Is your client willing to do less than sixty? Um, <clears throat> look, we we in, in my mind, we would certainly appreciate whatever uh, we could do. Um, you know, could we do less than six feet? I mean, I, I think the answer would have to be yes to that. Uh, we're just trying to make it again where 
the scale of the home feels right. And because it's a very large home, we feel like the scale could, you know, could use some extra height. I mean, um, we were at your generosity, I'll say it that way, to, to, to grant whatever we would be able to do. Um, a question on the drive. Essentially, this is a fire lane type of situation. So this is um, this has been proposed by the consultation with someone and so forth. If this were if this were to be something that was approved and and were um, to be in, built and in place, it would. It would have to be could only be successful if the local fire department knew what was there and knew how it was to be used and so forth. Is there any discussion about how and communication with them and these provisions so that they could take advantage of these provisions? Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we would be happy to meet with them for any sort of instruction to actually talk through these things. When when we met with Kurt and Larry a couple of weeks ago, I think the main points we talked about was the fire suppression system um, and then the Knox box. I don't know if it was actually discussed about lighting the driveway and, and the clearance and things like that, but certainly we want to have a discussion so that we can know what needs they ultimately have to service this residence, um, we want to make sure everyone will be on the same page for them. So we're willing to have any other conversations needed. Did they view the plan layout? Yes. And your comments were? Uh, it, can it, I don't want to put words in Kurt's mouth, but, but un, simply put, I think it was, look, regardless of what you may say, um, you know, another thing that we showed them was though, although the height of the structure might be 33 feet, you know, for example, to get to a windowsill or a balcony might be only 13 feet or 16 feet. Um, but, you know, even after looking at the plans, it was simply, look, this is kind of the standard letter that we issue when we have a request and, and really we're just going to stick with it. Yeah, specifically talking about the plan to do uh, the notion of access around the building. This is really what I look at too much, so much the, the very point. And, and I'll let Mike kind of talk on this a little bit. Um, Mike, did you hear that question about? I believe, I believe so. One of the concerns is for the uh, collapse area around the building. And what we said on that is because of the size of the parcel, we've got a lot of room around the structure compared to you know, maybe your typical 10 foot wide setbacks on each side will have a lot more room around that. So we'll be able to maintain a, a, a very nice uh, amount of uh, space around the building. And if we need to be able to look at that with them and, uh, you know, get their approval on that so they know they can access all the way around well, you know, we're happy to enter that dialogue with them. Okay, so I actually mean, didn't have that conversation is what it sounds like. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. So it sounds like you didn't actually have that specific conversation. We, we uh, brought it up, but again, most of the conversation was based on, you know, the fire suppression. But we had put that in one of our, um, our emails, I guess, saying we've got, you know, we don't have a uh, very tight setbacks like most homes do. I mean, as far as side yard setbacks, we have a lot of room around, so we're happy to address that. Yes, sir. Anybody have anything else that they'd like to ask? What's my last name? Uh, Scott, S C H A P. Thank you. Yep. What was the media? Did, I want to think you back on your question. Well, yeah, I hope, I hope you know, what was the media with water or CO2 or something? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear that real well. For the fire suppression system, what was the proposed media? What were the proposed? 
the media? Were they going to use water or CO two or? It would be a water system. Uh, any you know, most of this, um, if it's as long as it's in a heated part of the building. If and again, this would all be engineered and approved by the you know whether it's fire department or building department in your case. But if there's any areas that have to be done that are not heated, it would have to be done with an antifreeze type system. If it's in heated areas, it would be typically a water system. Yes, sir. Um, just to protect my board, it's just that seven o'clock tonight, we're hearing this and to make a decision um, and ask these people to ponder this is a little um, dicey for me. Um, so I, I'd just like to hear from the board if you can be comfortable with what our choices would be to continue and get information from you the specifics. Um, we can vote to, in favor and adopt it and make these changes. We can deny the petition or that's it. Absolutely. So, hey, just, just for the other petition, I don't know if we have the building commission. Sorry. I don't know that we at the building commission have the expertise to inspect the fire suppression system. Larry might. But otherwise, I would hope we find somebody who can come in and inspect that, probably at the owner's cost. And, and, and basically, uh, and so that maybe needs to be on here. Um, just, you know, I, I'd hate to see you guys approve it and then the building commissioners say that we don't. So that, that eventuality needs to be dealt with in the conditions that happen. And I can, I, just to your point, I can voluntarily agree to that. So if ultimately there's going to be an independent consultant that you guys want to hire to make sure that it complies with code, then, then the petitioner will pay for it. I think that's right. Typically in the code, there's provision for a special inspection and we can certainly do that. Well, I think um, these are all reasonable things. The the hesitation, I guess, it, you know, gets down to the details of, of how it is actually done. And um, right now, we don't have very much detail, so either we would either have to see more detail to make us feel better about that, or we have to put downstream conditions on how that detail. Would be satisfied. We won't have another. If we were to approve it in this condition, we wouldn't have another opportunity to review it ourselves. Someone else would have to be. And there's, in spite of your assurances, this is still pretty um, schematic, you know, if you will, to be conceptual. And, and what, even though I am. Um, Positively disposed to these kinds of provisions conceptually. Um, the question is, how do we do this in such a way that nobody gets exposed? To address to address your concern, if you are inclined, and, and you you do have a lot to ponder, there's a lot thrown at you. I I think that um, timing wise, and for them to go back up. My concern for you is for them to present anymore and the public hearing closed and the public, which was advertised and those things. And now we've continued a couple of meetings. Uh, I, I would advise to shy away from any continuance for submissions that weren't already part of the record uh, and the details of that because the public hearing has been had right at the opportunity. However, I do think that your downstream conditions can address those for instance by saying subject to building commission and fire department approval for instance if they don't receive those their variance is dead in the water so you you can address those you really don't have any avenues within the code that you would impose those restrictions if you saw them there might be things that you know detail wise you'd want to see problem is you're in this gray area again because we've continued time has passed public hearing has been had in those submissions 
So th those are significant, and I want to go one step further, and I'm not advocating for a position that, the, you know, obviously they're in response to the fire department's letter, and, you know, had the fire department had an opportunity to see these conditions of these proposals and the specifics, they might have changed that opinion or might not have rendered it. I can't speak for them. So your best hope at this point and where we are is to put those conditions and, you know, I guess I'll allow a second bite at the apple because the, the fire department will be involved, the building commission will be involved to approve those. And it, it could be, I don't want to call it worthless, but I'll use that simple term of worthless variance if they don't get that approval. Yeah, I interrupted your other thought, I think so. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> there was a danger there. <laughs> um, Normally, we are very careful about limitations on what we variances to because the ordinances, while none of them are perfect, they are the result of incremental modifications to the way things that are done over time in order to result from experience that people have had, both good and bad. And so we normally try to be very careful not to throw away things because it's inconvenient or this is a you know just happens to be something that has come up at the moment and so and i and i respect that part of it, uh, that we're generally very careful um this uh feels different right? And, and and there are reasons for that, but I'm having I'm having a hard time reconciling that part and uh, the reasonableness of this, and trying to figure out in such a way without you know just kicking the can down the road. Well, let me go another potentiality because my big concern for you is the public hearing portion and where we're going, and are we rehashing? One option for you may be, and then, you know, you open one door, you close another, right? Time is of the essence because of the costs and projects and wanting to move forward and whether. One option that I would suggest and I would support in, in terms of recommendations for you, if you were inclined and you want to consider more items and you want details, you could have them re-notice the hearing. Of course, that's a cost and expense and time. But it's an option, you know, they could ask you to make a decision based on what's there and that, that's their prerogative and you can decide what you'd like to do. Um, so there, there's re-noticing that hearing would be publication, would be sending notices to the adjacent, the joining, or the owners within 300 feet, sorry, because that's, and going through that so that the public would have an opportunity to consider and you're reopening that and I, I think that you could, you could do that without going back to the preliminary stage without refiling of the petition. My concern is the process. And so that if you are inclined to do that I, I, and have them present more detail and more things that would be considered part of the record, I think that's your only option to move forward that way. You could consider these conditions and impose any that you'd like, including the ones they've offered. You know, they also have some options to ask for or to consider as well. This is a tough one, and, and I uh, just um, I have a passion for safety, and that's why this isn't sitting with me. Six feet is a lot. Um, it's a lot, and um, I deeply respect the gentlemen and women on our fire department, <laughs> and I can teach your six-year-old to read. I can, you know help you help them be but i lean on these people to teach me and i am not comfortable um i'm putting that out there early but this is a lot this is a huge expectation and really not any um it, it's a want it's not a need so 
that's where I am. And I'm not sure how we should proceed. Do we board? Well, I don't know. Nobody understands slippery slopes better than me. I've lived slippery slopes my whole life. Okay, so, um, I don't view this situation as a slippery slope slope. And uh, there's not going to be uh, very many more times where a house was this built this in this kind of isolation in the town of Long Beach. And if there is, well, then I guess uh, whatever the BCA is at the time will consider it. Um, the uh, the height restriction, I, I tried to sort out some of my thoughts. Um, you know, that came out of uh, history and experience with the guys in the fire department, and uh, also the uh, never ending trend of the people building really tall houses on you know, Lakeshore Drive, particularly on the east end. We're now you look out there, there are four or five stories or so. Whole different ballgame, right? Uh, and you know what? That also happens to occur sometimes, or it can occur up against the doom of somewhere else in town. And oh, by the way, frequently these houses are never been set back. This is a big issue. So, uh, well, at the beginning of that, uh, you know, I kind of had my own thoughts about it, but I think, I think John Wall uh, convinced me that there was an error um, to this. I know that it's, uh, it's blind. Uh, the, um, the truth here is that uh, if this house were to burn, it could burn to the ground and nobody show up. It probably wouldn't bother anybody except for the owner, right? Um, I catch the trees on the fire, but with that being said, you, so you, you don't have the, the same kind of juxtaposition that you have in the rest of your town. And that, that's an important consideration. Um, you know, the, the, the building site is essentially the flat, so the whole concern about one thing being built into the hill and the added type and all that other stuff, it's gone. Uh, the reason I asked about, did you talk, did you talk about the plan of view, is one of the notions is what's the access? Well, for example, the fire truck can drive right around the house. That's a whole lot different than it can only pull up from the garage. Um, so that's, that's an issue. Um, for, uh, for rescue, on some of these houses, again, on Lakeshore Drive, uh, yeah, I don't know how you get somebody out of the top floor or some of those. If there's a, a fire down low and you're trying to get them out of the fire, I have no idea how the fire department would do that. Um, and that's that's a that's a big concern. That's one of the concerns, and in my opinion, probably one of the chief concerns that led to the uh, ordinance in the first place. I don't think we had that issue here. And the hype isn't consumed so much in the building per se, but instead it's the uh, it's the projection of the gable over the size of the building. So uh, you know, so I now I start taking a pencil and start altering your, the design of the house and thing. And I think you get into jeopardy with uh, destroying the aesthetics. Um, there's no houses that are next to it uh, that you would look at and say, wow, look at this monstrosity next to all these other cute little houses. You don't have that issue because it's, once again, it's all by itself. Um, so, I, yeah, I, uh, I think the uh, concessions were uh, considerable and they're uh, uh, well, well worth um, consideration. I do think there's opportunity to get some action. I don't believe you're going to get six feet out of the height without destroying the appearance of the door. Um, can you get two or three? Yeah, I think you probably could. I don't know if it's worth it or not. Um, 
but that would include some burn work, you know, to open a little bit different you know, foundation height and building stars and all that stuff. But I think you can get it uh, a little bit out of it, or much more than uh, So I think, yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm inclined to, uh, to uh, allow the request. That's my inclination. Uh, I, I'm not afraid of the slippery slope because of how unique this is. So somebody would have to buy the country club and put a house in the middle of, you know, the terrible, right? Some such thing. And they'd have to buy, you know, a dozen invoices, tear them all down. Well, you know what? At that point, maybe, maybe it gets visited again. Um, and that the circumstances might be the same, it might not be. But I, I, I think the topography, uh, the design of the house, uh, it's, it's not four stories high, it's not even three stories high, that's it. Um, the access seems like uh, it was pretty good and I improved it. I think the uh, additions of the uh, fire suppression and so forth, and all good stuff. So. I don't, you know, getting back to uh, what our mantra is, right? Uh, I don't see where approval would, uh, would be injurious to safety. Um, that's where I disagree with you. I well, think that's, and that's good you're talking. Yeah. I'm not sure you're, what's uh, that? Or the general welfare of the community, I just don't see that. Uh, I don't think it adversely affects the value of adjacent property. Uh, I guess that could be argued one way or the other. Uh, maybe some people would say it improves the, the value, and some people would say it, it, it detracts. And uh, the strict application of the ordinance, uh, it really comes down to some practical difference. So you're going to line up with a flat roof house. Yeah, I'm thinking that might not look so nice. So that's, that's uh, we're all going into my thinking. Uh, I, I originally did ask for some, so something you can get along on the height and the camera you guys uh, thought not. So that's all, that's all I, that's, that's my brain does. Thank you. Well, it is, it's possible to go around the building. I'm skeptical about the ability of the fire truck to drive around this building and the slope in that soil, particularly water bottle. And I think that's the reason that they had talked about creating a, essentially a fire access in front. So uh, I think it, in the real world, it probably would be an illusion to think that it would be possible to get. Trucks to say, I think that would be a great motion ground to be yeah. So I think the fire access to the frontier is the only reasonable access, and I understand why they're increasing that. Um, I also want to go back a little bit to the point that uh, you brought up, Anthony, yes. about um, precedent. Well, my understanding is that what we do does not create precedent. Uh, there is the example in um, the um, custom that could come, and uh, the town is severely handicapped. And I, I'll put this in a little bit of my background. I'm, I was a registered architect many years of practice. We were doing institutional buildings. We regularly worked with buildings much larger than this that had a much more elaborate fire concerns, schools and so forth. We regularly worked with fire suppression systems and used fire, uh, fire prevention professionals to design those systems. So all that means is that I have some appreciation of that. And one of the weaknesses I always thought about our ordinance is that we didn't have the authority and the state had denied us the ability to raise the level 
of the game for the, that kind of fire prevention in this situation. But since you broached it, now it's on tape, which I think is a good thing, and it could be a good thing going forward. It was just me speaking. So I know that there are fire prevention practices that have applied to this would greatly reduce the risk to the neighborhood. And, and I'm uh, amenable to those. My primary concern is how do we get those things in within the structure of the um, institution that we are right here now in such a way that we don't just give you a white card so that you can say, oh, we have the approval and we have the variance and, and so forth. And um, but we won't have another, like I said before, another opportunity to, to make sure that because not everybody is careful because down the road, sure, because you would think that they want to be. So, so it goes back to that same thing that we were talking about a minute ago for me, Chris. How structured it. Could I say something about that, uh, your concern? One of the, Michigan is the same as Indiana as far as not requiring fire suppression in homes. Uh, but when we do a fire suppression system, then we have to do it to code. In other words, I can't just put in six sprinklers in a big house and say, oh, that's all I want to put in. If I'm going to put a system in, it has to be fully designed to meet code. And I would suppose that this would be the exact same way in Indiana then, where we would say whether that's the the uh, state fire, you know, uh, department or a bit, but there's got to be some code that says, well, th if you're going to put it in, this is the code you have to follow. And that would be what I would suppose would be the same thing that we would find the group that's going to engineer the system. They would take the plan and put the entire system on the plan that we would uh, bring to you for proposal. It would be all engineered according to the state code that is mandated that it has to be if you do a system. Does that make sense? Yes, I understand it. I think okay. what I would say is accurate. It's however within our world and we need to make sure that we create our documents to reflect that. Yeah, we also want that document in our hands. And, and just to reiterate, I think your only two ways there are to be general and you don't have, you're not able to touch it again. And if your inclination is that you want to have your stamp on it, I think the only way with where we are now is to have them re-notice and continue this public, reopen that public hearing. And I believe that you're on solid ground. If you were inclined, you're not required to do so, right? That would be you finding a way based on your inclinations to allow that additional information and be able to dictate the details. Otherwise, you you, you don't have a way to do that at, from where you sit. So we do a modified continuance and do... I, I think you would continue this matter with the instruction that they would re-notice the public hearing and reopen, they they can as long as it's retitled, re you know continued hearing and the public again. It's important that the public and the surrounding owners and the, the newspaper you know that's a cost and it's time. And, and again, they may not they may rather you just make a decision based on what you have and they they have a preference, right? They could withdraw. There, every, both sides have a lot of options here, but if you want to have additional information, you want details, and you want to influence that, uh, put your stamp on it versus leaving it downstream to use Doug's terms, I believe the only way is to re-notice and reopen that public hearing. That would allow us to hear, um, so far we have your word that you bought this written letter. And I have a letter if you'd like it. I submit it tonight. Um, it would be nice to be able to read that and yeah, let that sink in for more than five minutes. And we'll yeah, give an opportunity for um, further discussion with the uh, 
representatives of the fire departments and any any other neighbors that might have a different perspective on this. Or who, whose interests you have now, right? To, because they didn't weren't aware to pay attention, whatever that is. This is a different ballgame. So, do we have to do a board vote? I mean, well, or if we decide to do the remotes, would we make a motion? Yes, but I, because we're a little bit unique here in the path, I, I think it's important that we talk about what the petitioner, you know, it's your pleasure, they're before you and they've surrendered it, the public hearing, but I, I think it might be appropriate that if they want you to have a decision tonight, then, then that makes it clear on you too, if they're amenable to re noticing sure. and opening it up. Sure. Uh, yeah, and certainly given it's a very novel situation that we're in, um, certainly we'd be inclined to have a decision if the decision was favorable. Now, obviously, you're not going to tip your hats to that. But the reason I bring this up is certainly you three are speaking the majority. You two are brand new. And if ultimately you two would recuse yourself, which I have no idea, that you three would, would prefer more information, then certainly we're, we're willing to do that. Um, you know, so I'm not saying like, hey, tip your hat so I know which way to go, but I, we are certainly willing to have the discussion if you're going to say, look, there's just no chance, and there's just no chance that, that we're going to vote favorably tonight. But if you want to have come, come back in front of us, then certainly we'd be amenable to that. And look at him like you. Uh, I don't. I don't think that that's an unreasonable request. You okay. you can't make those decisions, and you can't make them that promise. But obviously, it'd be wasting everybody's entire time if you weren't inclined and uh, to receive additional information and, and additional input from the public. There could be remonstrances against, right? Um, you know, we talked about Mr. Luderbach's letter. Technically, it's not part of the public hearing record. But there might be more input. There might be a room full of people against it. That's a risk everybody takes. But if the inclination is based on these, this addresses our concerns because there are significant hurdles, and that's a big one within their burden to prove, then you, you can do that. And obviously, you know, you, you can't tell them you're approving that if that's not the case, because you need to make finding, written findings and decisions. But if there's a, an ability to satisfy your questions and they do that in good faith, you know, I, I, I think that there's some quid pro quo in terms of moving forward that there's an inclination that there's a there's a resolution here in, in terms of what the relief they seek. Curious if our board members have any questions or thoughts. We should see my engineer thoughts on what for the system or departments, you know, deems acceptable, but they're the safety. Yes. You know. Experts, right? So that's kind of a problem. And I, I'm, I'm more concerned about the timing of the concessions than anything else without the detail. Um, and I think that when my board members up here brought up good questions about what does the turnaround mean? What does the access, you know, what does this additional access mean? And what are the specifics of it in order for us to make a kind of a more informed decision about uh, are, are those concessions real concessions that, that, that address the concerns of the fire department regarding safety? Um, that, I mean, that's kind of my thought process is that is the timing of it is bad. If we had more time to consider it, if we had more detail, it would be different. No. Um, so it makes it more difficult. Yeah. Just to add one more thing, and maybe because it seems to be the continued flavor of each of you, is maybe the message is listen, if these are discussed and you come back and, and the fire department has given its blessing, for lack of a better description, and they they agree with these, that, that seems to be the largest hurdle here um, based on what the record is. Like I said, I do suggest that the record may change. You may have a room full of remonstrators against it. You may not. You may have a room full of support of it. So I, I think that if, if that is the message here of, Convince the fire department, and you'll likely convince us. Then they can go back and get their detail. And if not, you give them their decision, and they can pivot. And you know, no matter what you do, thumbs up or thumbs down. Ultimately, they still have the gauntlet of the building commission, and it's a large project, right? And and they did. And, and we've talked about this many times. It's not a negative. They're allowing the law to 
jump and come here and ask for the variance they believe they needed and, and that's what they chose to do and they may be back for you for other variances but that's not our concern today we're only concerned about what they're asking for and if everybody in good faith wants to do it i i've given you the avenue which i believe is the only avenue to not start all over again which is reopening re-noticing and allowing them to present some more detailed information and maybe it'll even be here arm in arm with Chief Ernst, right? I don't know. Yeah, and that's good advice. We appreciate that, Chris. Um, so, board, do we re-notice, have them re-notice it and get the details and um, go to the next month? Yeah. I would make a motion that uh, we uh, continue this and allow them to present uh, this in more detail and have uh, some more time to review it. And I'm just, so that would be through the renoticing. That is republishing, re going through the, the process, and I, I would work with them on the wording that I think would satisfy for you. But it, again, is the message here it, it, you don't have to decide, you don't have to give that to them. He, he could ask you to make a decision, right? I, but is the message here that if they satisfy the fire department or satisfy your questions and concerns, that, that we're making progress towards? The relief they seek. I mean, those are. I think it's important for you to tell them what they want them to come back with. I was going to say I'm going to put on the wall that if I were edited, it was wrong to know what they have a question to answer. Yeah, and just to be frank, it's it was very difficult to get the meeting that we got with with Mr. Ernst and Mr. Wall. And nothing against them. It was just very difficult. And then we found ourselves, I think it was last Thursday, finally getting that meeting. So it's not as easy simply to just go, hey, let's let's have a meeting tomorrow. Let's get this done. If you guys are willing to want to continue, we will work on doing that. What I can do at a minimum, what it sounds like you guys have requested, is we've given five conditions. You know, we've given the bones of five conditions. Flush that out. We want specifics. We want to know what's going on in one, two, three, four, five. From there, we want to meet ultimately, try to meet with the fire department to see, hey, does this relieve any of your concerns? But at a minimum, if I don't get an additional meeting, which I hope I do, I can come back in front of you to say, to your point, we're not pushing this downstream. I can say these are the five things that you guys can put your stamp of approval on. And if we come up with additional restrictive conditions that we think would be more beneficial, we'll bring that too. But I'm hearing at least a minimum of, of that. All right. So, is there anything else you want to see that you can think of? Again, not everybody has those details we're dealing with. Well, or other than the fire department's blessing, and obviously that will go a long way. Yes. I would like to know. You know, at least uh, a um, which fire professional would be used and their credentials and their sort of you know their credentials in the state of Indiana and so forth. And when you when you mentioned that the person that would install like the system when you talk about the fire professional that would be yeah, used. usually it's kind of designed those sort of things. So you know who would be would be certifying its completion and and this you know a conceptual uh approach to you know rather than i don't know understood you know, what's the source of water is the domestic water is you know uh, the big tank on the roof i don't know sure sure we can get created All right, so we'll make a motion. Yes. If that, if that's your inclination. The motion would be to continue this matter and cause notice to be sent to the required property owners as well as republication and reopen the public hearing. That would be the motion. Okay. We'd like to make a motion to that effect. What he just um, spelled out for us. Yeah. 
Yes. Make a motion to well, re notice, have, have them re notice the hearing, uh, publicize the hearing, um, and then reopen that. We're going to reopen the public here. Make that motion. Is there a question on the. Well, my only question was, yeah, yeah that's for sure. I do believe that here why it's necessary to public hearing clause. And so I believe that anybody uh, could have a valid basis that, because there's a significant amount of information and you're asking for detail. And I think it's important for your public record to be included in that in the public hearing technically closed. So while it's an inconvenience, I believe that it is necessary other than starting all over and doing preliminary. <laughs> so, it's the best I think you can do to accommodate and try to still give them a chance based on their petition and where they are in the process. Was that made a motion on second? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank Right. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So I'll move to the second. Adjourn at 7.15 today. Thank you for coming.